Two stocks I'm buying in August of 2024. This is a video that I will do very often. I'm gonna discuss two stocks that I bought. One of them I've never discussed. I never disclosed that I own it because it's a very recent position. I opened in July. I'm gonna buy more of it right now in August. The second one is a stock that I got at least 2,000 questions on. Why? Because it's been going down. Although nothing has changed with the fundamentals, but when the stock goes down, you get a lot of questions. So I'm gonna talk about both stocks. And again, I don't do it very often. So what I'm asking from you is if you could please press the like button and let me know what you think in the comments. If you disagree with me, if you agree with me, just let me know what you think. And I've been buying the dip, as many of you guys know. I discussed it in this video why stock market has a long way up to go. I'm not really buying into this whole idea that the market is going to crash in 2024. And even if it does, if I'm finding good stocks at fair value or good opportunities, I'm going to buy them. I'm not going to wait for the market to crash if I'm finding stocks that are undervalued. To me, that's more like timing the market. I don't time the market. Even though the stock market, maybe I believe is going to crash. But if I'm finding good opportunity, why would I wait on it? Just because I think stocks will go down? So it doesn't make sense. And the first stock, which I'm very excited I got to buy, I always wanted to own it. This is Visa. I bought Visa as $253. I believe I could share the exact cost basis to the pennies on the screen. But I did buy the stock. I put in 6% of my portfolio at once, which I don't do it very often. But sometimes if I have high conviction in something and, and I believe it's not going much lower, I tend to go a little bit bigger than usual. Like with NOC, I put up 10% of my portfolio at once in the stock. And I'm up like 11% on it in a week or two. It's been doing very well. And I put in 6% in Visa. I hope it goes lower because I want to buy more. But Visa is a stock that's loved by many investors, but it's also hated because many people believe it's overvalued and it's going to 15 times earnings. And I believe this is not true. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why. <clears throat> now for Visa, again, I don't share exactly when I buy a stock. I don't share the exact timing and all that stuff because I can't just keep doing videos. So I share all that stuff in my own group. It's much quicker. I tell you when I buy them, when I sell them, small caps, micro caps, like work construction and many others. If you're interested, this is the link. But I do discuss some of that sometimes on Twitter because it's easy. I could just type it in. So I said, you know, Visa is presenting a great buying opportunity. That was at 254. I bought it at like 253 or something. So that's what I do sometimes. But for Visa, the last earnings report was very good. They still grew earnings like 10%. I can put up the screenshot where I can scroll up a little bit. They do grow earning 10%, I should say revenues. Gap, non-gap EPS was 12%. So they're still growing, I mean, 10 and 12%. This is a company that's like $450 billion market cap and they're still growing 10 and 12%. Now, one of the concerns with the earnings report was the volume. The volume was decreasing. And this was a concern to many, but I don't believe this is such a big deal because it's still a bit cyclical. I mean, it goes up and it goes down and it's, it, but it's, it's still increasing, but it's not increasing as much as it used to. So volume decreased a little bit. This is somewhat of a concern, but nothing too crazy for the long term. Now, the main argument, or I should say three arguments against owning Visa. That's what I'm going to discuss. The first one is that Visa, yes, it has been growing 14, 15, 16% EPS per share for a while, but it just cannot keep doing it forever. And I disagree because there's a lot of areas that are rapidly growing within Visa. One of them is other revenues. Other revenues is only 780, so it's nothing major, but it's still growing fast. It's growing 31%, 31% on the quarter, and it's helping increase the total uh, revenue uh, growth for, you know, star, like the database, service revenues, international transaction, and other things. So this is helping out very, very much, and it's massively, massively going to grow over the long term. And this is what Morningstar said. They were talking about, you know, Visa, and they said how investors, most investors are wrong about the Visa. And I said, despite 23% revenue growth in value-added services, 18% growth in flows, they have 310 as a price target from Morningstar. And they said the secular growth concerns are somewhat overblown. Valuation is at rock bottom level. And I'm going to tell you why it's at rock bottom level. And this is what they're saying. And I agree with them that Visa, I believe, will be able to maintain 13, 14, 15% growth, especially as they're going to be buying back more stock over time. They cannot just keep reinvesting in themselves. They can't just do acquisitions, all the antitrust stuff. 
Uh, and they just can, have nothing but to do dividends and do buybacks. So I'm expecting more buybacks in the future. And I believe they can get 14, 15% sustainable over the long term. The second concern was around the merger of Capital One and Discover. That this might, you know, affect uh, Visa a little bit. <clears throat> Visa and MasterCard is going to put maybe pressure on them. The margin is going to decrease or something. Again, I don't believe this is true, but there's a lot of lawsuits, a lot of uncertainty around this merger, and I'm not really sure if it's even going to go through. I mean, I would doubt it's going to go through. I'm just being honest, but it could. I mean, it could. But by the time it goes through and they put up the database together and do all this, that's years and years from now. Maybe from now to then, maybe I'll be out of visa already. I mean, I don't know. I changed my mind quickly, but I'm trying to hold it for the long term. But from now till then, I mean, it's going to take some time. I, don't, I can't really say much about it. It's going to take some time for me, you know, to see what they have. The third concern was around Visa stock crashing because we're entering a recession. Well, in 2022, we had a recession. Many people labeled it as a recession to negative uh, consecutive GDP quarters. And people said that was a recession. And the stock market crashed. It crashed a lot. A lot of stocks went down. Visa was down 4% on the year, you know, 4%. So this is more of a safety stock. It's not like if we have a recession, people are going to stop traveling. They're going to stop spending. They can keep borrowing money and doing what they do. I mean, this, this is what the people do, especially in the United States. So I'm not concerned about the recession or anything affecting Visa. <clears throat> but if I look at Visa, I'm getting 56% net income margin, very high net income margin. I mean, this is higher than Microsoft, higher than Apple, higher than any of your favorite tech companies. And they don't have that much stock-based compensation. You have Visa at 56% net income margin, amazing business model. And as Monish Pabrai said, you know, this is inflation index because if prices increase 10%, you know, the prices on the credit, whenever they swipe it, they increase 10%. So Visa's revenue increases 10%. So it's it's just amazing business model. I'm a big fan of the company. You look at EPS, EPS has been growing 50, 60%, expected to be between 13, 14, 15. So I would say 14% to me is achievable. So I'm getting an amazing company like Visa, wide mode stuff, amazing management, amazing company. You know, I'm getting 56% net income margin. I'm getting 14, 15% EPS uh, gross. And I'm also getting it at 24 times earnings. And if you look at it on a historical average at the slides that I'm showing you, 24 times earnings historically hasn't been expensive at all. Even COVID, March 2020, couldn't get Visa below 20 times earnings. It got it to 20 and a half. Now you're buying it at 24. I bought it at 23 times earnings over here, but now it's sitting at 24 times. And based on a, a historical basis, even though Visa might grow a little bit lower in the future, and relative to other opportunities in the market, especially if you adjust for stock-based compensation, to me, Visa is undervalued. It's fairly valued to undervalued. It's not the most undervalued stock in the world, but for what I'm getting, I'm not expecting a multiple contraction. And I'm expecting 14, 15% EPS per share growth. So I'm expecting, you know, my return over the long term to be close to Visa, 14 to 15% for EPS. My, ex my expected return is 14 to 15%. And I don't believe they're going to have a multiple contractors. They might even have an expansion. When it traded at 24 times the last time or 23 times, they went up as high as 28 times. So this is another reason people might get, you know, excited about Visa. But on the low end, I'm expecting 14, 15% annual, which is pretty much a double every five years. And for a big tech or should I say large cap, mega cap stock like Visa, I think this is an amazing buying opportunity. And I would love to buy more on the way down as someone that prefers to buy small and micro caps. That's what I have in my portfolio. Stocks that could return 20, 30, 40% a year. I mean, I'm, you know, wise enough to look at this mega cap and say, I mean, that would be an amazing amazing hedge for my small caps and it's a safe company 15 percent that's amazing so i'm buying visa and i would love to buy more on the way down this is the second stock that i'm gonna <coughs> discuss and, and i'm sorry i'm a little bit sick but i got a lot of questions around this stock and this is ulta beauty now the main reason i got a lot of questions were because the stock went down and questions like, you know, did you sell Alta Beauty? Did your thesis change? What's happening with the stock? Why is the stock going down? And all these kind of things. The truth is, why would I my thesis change if they haven't re even reported earnings yet, guys? I mean, they haven't reported earnings. Last earnings weren't too bad at all. I liked the earnings. They weren't as bad as people were expecting. They even still growing revenues in this economic slowdown. They're not even declining yet. So it was pretty good. And I haven't reported earnings, but the stock has been going down because people and investors, they're expecting lower earnings. They're expecting an earnings disappointment. 
Well, maybe that doesn't happen. No one can predict earnings. And this is exactly what happened last year. Uh, Alta Beauty was going down, not because they reported bad earnings, nothing on the fundamentals, but because people were expecting bad earnings. Why? Because we're going to have a recession. This is the recession narrative. That's why stocks like mine, like NOC, has been going up. Stocks like ATD Alimentation, which I talked about on YouTube, is also going up because people are investing into the recession safe stocks that I've been talking about for months, Pepsi and many others, and they're dumping the stocks that they believe will do well will do bad in a recession and maybe they're wrong about ultra beauty and in the case of you know last year they were wrong because earnings they were bad but they weren't as bad as expected and the stock went up 49 percent or 52 percent in like five or six months and i owned the stock back then and it was a magnificent rally on ultra beauty and I talked more about this stuff in this video call, revealing my most profitable strategy, which is mainly around sentiment. You know, most people don't really talk about it much on YouTube. It's mostly only about fundamentals. But I take it one step further and I explain my thesis with Alta Beauty on, on how this actually plays out on it. So I haven't sold the stock. Nothing has changed. They haven't even reported earnings. It's all about drama and recession fears. But again, I recognize that with this strategy, you know, I've been mostly right with the strategy. I mean, I, I rarely lost money, but sometimes I'm wrong and sometimes I'm just early. And maybe with Alta Beauty, I have to admit, maybe I was early. I could share my cost basis. It's like 393 and I owned it for a while and, and I did buy more. I'm going to buy more in, uh, tw in August as long as everything is fine. But I recognize that, you know, sometimes I might be early, but sometimes I also might be wrong. I mean, I'm not going to make money on every stock. I'm not going to be right on every stock. Maybe Alta Beauty is going to do what I'm expecting it to do and go up like 50% in six months. Or maybe it's going to turn on stock, maybe like Walgreens or something. It's going to be closing store and the stock goes down 50%. I mean, th that's possible. That's just how it is. And, and I couldn't care less. You know, worst case, I sell it and move on and uh, make my money back with something else. I mean, that's my mindset. You know, I don't try to hype stocks on YouTube. I don't try to always, you know, give people confirmation bias. I just say the truth that I don't really care. And if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. Like if you're expecting to never lose money in the market, maybe the stock market isn't for you. And, and that's how it is. And it's 5% of my portfolio, so it's, it's not the biggest deal in the world. But for Alta Beauty, nothing has changed. They have 95% in terms of, uh, you know, say ultimate reward members, which is more of, uh, you know, loyalty members. It has some kind of a cult following amongst the people that goes there. Last earnings wasn't the best, but they still increased comparable sales 1.6%. Most retailers are decreasing, declining, and Alta will still be able to grow 1.6%, and they expected an improvement going into the year, and their guidance had comparable sales uh, 2 to 3% instead of 4 to 5%, so they did revise it down a little bit, but it's still gross. I mean, it's still growing. For where the company is trading at, this is still very, very good. Uh, earnings per share, they decreased it a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually increased it, because the stock has been going down so much, and they've been buying back stock. They likely bought back much more more stock at much lower prices and they do have the balance sheet and the free cash flow to buy back stock they have 230 million dollars in quarterly free cash flow but they also have 524 million dollars in cash and cash equivalent with almost no debt no debt they have some lease liabilities and taxes but nothing much on the debt so they have a debt-free company 524 million dollars in cash around 230 million dollars of free cash flow for them to buy back stock every single quarter last quarter they bought back 285 million dollars worth of stock and i believe they're going to do more of it so i wouldn't be surprised if they end up raising epis guidance this is exactly what happened last year when i owned it this is one of was one of the catalysts that pushed up the stock like 51 percent in six months and i'm highly confident that the same thing is going to happen again now for all types Beauty, I'm getting a pretty good company. And yes, maybe it's not the most recession resistant stock ever, but at the same time, people that bought makeup are gonna just stop buying makeup. Maybe they're gonna buy you know, less expensive makeup, but they could still buy that from Alta Beauty. They have different price ranges and different variations. And Amazon has been existing for years, and Alta Beauty is still here. You could look at the five or 10 year chart on the stock. Before now, it has been doing very well. So it's not like Amazon gonna suddenly be taking over and Alta is going to zero or any of that stuff. So, and it still has good return on invested capital, 39%. They're still disciplined, buying back stock, returning value to shareholder, no dividends, which is good. They also have their expansion into Mexico. They have partnered with someone to expand into Mexico. That could be a pretty big gross area for uh, Alta Beauty. And I'm getting all that stuff. 
at 13.9 times earnings. I mean, that, that, that's that's absolutely shocking. Even March 2020 traded at 10 times, now sitting at 13.9, around 14 times earnings, or 6.6% free cash flow yield. And in my opinion, for what Ulta Beauty is, for the growth that's putting up right now, and for all the bad sentiment and recession narrative, I think Ulta Beauty is extremely undervalued at this price. And I know I always get these comments is that Ulta Beauty is a bad company, it has no moat, no competitive advantage. And this is, again, what most investors say about every stock. Like, even if the stock has no moat, guys, but if it's priced accordingly, if it's too cheap to ignore, you know, like maybe BTI was last month or like PayPal is happening right now. So if a stock is too cheap to ignore, even though it has no moat, you could still make money on it. This is what investors don't understand. Like they're saying only if the stock has a moat and it's a quality company, I mean, you could make money on it. This is not true. If you buy the best quality company in the world, you pay 100 times earnings, it's growing 2% in EPS and it has no growth, you're going to lose money. I don't care how good the company is. But if you buy a stock that's just trash, it's a bad company and all these things, and you buy it, I don't know, at five times earnings with no debt, uh, <clears throat> and you pay a, a price accordingly and you believe earnings are sustainable, then it's not necessarily a value trap. Maybe it's priced you know less than what it should be but if the stock was priced more than it should be even though it's a quality company you're not going to make money on it and for Alta Beauty yes it's not the best company in the world but for it's, what it's pricing at what it is priced at I think this is reasonably priced and even well undervalued in my opinion for what Alta Beauty actually is and that's how I think about it. That's how I think about Visa. Visa to me is more of a long-term investment. I did mention before that Ulta Beauty to me wasn't a long-term investment. I you know get in and out. I buy the stock now. Then you know the bad sentiment goes away. Good sentiment comes in. People start loving the stock. The stock starts going up. It gets too expensive. I, I run all my numbers. It doesn't make sense. Then I sell it and move on. You know I talked about it here. But uh, but for me Visa is more of a long-term investment. So that's what I think about Visa and Ulta Beauty. Beauty. I share much more of that stuff and a lot of the small micro caps were up 48% year to date. It's all in my group. This is the link if you're interested. So thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing. So I'll talk to you in another video.